Well, hello again, everyone. If you're anything like me, you're starting to really miss being out and about in the old motorhome. But at least while we can't do that, we can get on with a few little jobs. And there's something that we've been meaning to do for a while now. Well, storage, of course, is always a little bit of an issue in the van, especially ours is quite a small motorhome, although people do manage in much smaller vans, of course. But it's got this sort of space here, which I think you could mount something like a TV in. Now, we don't have a TV in the van. We do tend to use the iPads and we have got a little small DVD player, but we'd have no real plans to get a TV. So... What I think might be an idea is to put a shelf across the middle there. And Nikki's uh, asked for that a couple of times. She's bought these little hanging bags which you can tuck bits and pieces into. But they do tend to swing around a bit while you're driving. And uh, if you leave anything too heavy in them like fruit, well for a start it gets bruised. And for another thing there's a lot of thudding around while you're going along. So anyway, I think what we're going to try and do is make something to go in there that doesn't look too out of place, hopefully. Now, because of the current situation, we don't really want to go off shopping and a lot of the stores aren't open anyway. And also we're trying to save a little bit of money being down to uh, just my income at the moment. So there must be something in here that we can use, I would have thought. Well, I think I've found something. And of course, as well as having to look right, it also doesn't really want to weigh very much because you don't want to add too much weight into the van and take away from the payload. So I've got some nice uh, batten really, which I can rip down into smaller sections to make any frame I need to come up with. And I've got quite a bit more of this over there. I've also found this nice bit of 3mm ply, which should make a good bottom to my shelf. So I've roughly sketched out the layout of the furniture that I've got here. And I'll just come up with something, some rough idea for what I want. Yeah, I don't know if you can even make out from my sketch there. It's a bit uh, too many lines, isn't it? Let's, let's shade it a bit, then uh, you might see a bit better where I'm going. Does that help? Probably not. Anyway, what I'm trying to show is I think I need an upright there to take the weight of the front of the shelf and an upright there, which I can fix onto this bulkhead bit. Not so much fixings on here, this is just a thin sheet. There will be some battens in it somewhere, but I don't know exactly where they are. I looked in these cupboards to see if I could see any fixings and I can't. So whilst I might be able to put a couple of screws through, they'll be really just to stop the shelf sagging and locate it rather than take any weight. So I'm gonna to fix to this little bulkhead here, that bulkhead there, and put an upright down and then that's my shelf and what I'm thinking is I could put like a rail along the front and return it there fill that gap in and that'll stop things falling off the shelf hopefully anyway that's not a very good uh, sketch really is it but uh, I think it gives me enough to work to well there's another little job to do while we're working on the van David and Lindsay from the Desmond's Donders channel have sent me a sticker, so let's add that to the back door. Now it's well worth checking their channel out for some excellent footage of their travels in Scotland. 
I'll put a link to their channel on the end screen. Now I've had a little measure up in the van and I reckon the shelf overall including the frame so the tight measurements need to be 900 by 260. Now my batten here is a shade under 1800 long so I need to use two of these to make up the frame around the shelf because I can cut one 900 length and one 260, probably two 260s out of each of these but uh, I'll use two and I'll have a little bit left over. Now what I want to achieve first is a groove at some point near the bottom of the timber to take that 3.6 mil ply. Now of course I don't want to cut it, I don't want to go all the way through and I haven't got a router bit that's thin enough. That would be the easiest thing to do is just run a router down there. Now in the old days I might have used something like my um, table saw there to make a trenching cut by either taking the riving knife out which is very naughty or lowering the riving knife below the top of the blade haven't really got the option on that one to do that now what i would say is obviously this is just a vlog of what i'm doing don't take this as any sort of instruction i have seen trenching attachments on circular saws and saws set up to allow trenching but just to trench by by taking all the guards off is is not really the done thing. So we're not going to do that anyway. Not that we have the capability to here in the garage. Now what I'm going to do is use my skill saw to make that groove in in the wood. Now of course I can't have any clamps or anything beyond that edge that's going to interfere with the guide. So what I'm going to do is just pin each bit of wood very slightly to the work mate just to hold it while I make those cuts you'll see what I mean right so I've set the saw up to make a six mil cut ten mil from the edge of the timber twit woo twit woo Yes, don't worry Mr Safety Al, the saw was unplugged the whole time I did that. Right, now it's time to cut it. Twit woo, twit woo. Well, yes, quite right. I have given most of my respirators away to people who are working in, in healthcare and such, but uh, I did keep one back because you don't really want to be breathing in the wood dust and you need your safety glasses, as Mr. Safety Owl reminded me. Now the next thing to do is going to be just to move that guard out very, very slightly to widen this groove enough that it'll take the piece of ply because it's not quite wide enough at the moment. You can see why this would be easier to do with the right size route of it, but uh, Never mind, we'll cope with what we've got. So you can see now that groove is wide enough to take my ply board. I could, uh, it could be a little bit tighter, but uh, to be honest, with this crude level of machining, I don't think that's too bad. So I'm going to stick with that. I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of the wood. Now how I set that up, if you didn't realise, is uh, obviously I deliberately left 10 mil there. And I measured from the fence to the near side of the blade. And then when I reset the fence to make the groove wider, I know my ply is 3.6. So I just tried to measure 13.6 mil to the far side of the blade and it's okay I think. Well 
there we go, that's the groove in everything. You might have noticed I had to go a few times up and down just to get the groove consistent. And it's worth doing that because obviously you don't want uh, to find that you've got some wobbles in there and some tight bits later on once you might have changed the settings on the saw. So just check it all the way across is what I do to uh, make sure it all fits. Right, it's uh, taking a lot of concentration this, so I think it's about time for a nice cup of tea. Oh, that's better. Well, for this job, I think I'm just going to do a straightforward mitre on each of the corners of the shelf. So I can go ahead and cut that on my mitre saw here. days later I had to work yesterday but I'm back on this today and the next thing to do I think is to measure out and cut the plywood for the base of the shelf. Now I've done that by measuring the length of the groove I've cut in the wood at its deepest point so it's easier to start from the 100 mil mark so you can see just as that 100 is going to start to disappear into the timber up to obviously where the flat of that groove ends. So at the moment that's really in 335, but I started on 100, so it's gonna be 235. Then I'm just gonna drop a mil off each end for a bit of clearance. So I'm gonna call that 233. Now, I've obviously done the same on the long bits and I've ended up with a size of 233 by 873. Now before I cut anything, I'm going to check how square this is because this has obviously been cut down from a larger board and you can see this corner is running out a little bit. This one's not too bad though, a very slight run out on it, I don't know that way but I think I should be okay if I work from this corner. Well, the cut I need to make to cut it lengthways, I can't use the guide because it's not long enough. This part is too thick for the guide. So I've clamped my spirit level on to act as a fence to cut against with the circular saw. feeling a little bit guilty about running this without any top guard at all so I'm going to make one up just so I'm not showing absolutely terrible practices in this video.
Well, another day, another sticker. And today's is from Wandering Womble. Let's stick that on. Oh, Mr. Womble has a very good channel and at the moment he's doing a nice conversion on a transit. So go and check that out if you haven't already. I'll put a link to his channel on the end screen as usual. And if you've got a channel sticker that you'd like to see slapped on my back door, then contact me on the email address below in the description. Well, there's a couple more bits to round off with the router that I missed yesterday, so I'm gonna just finish those off first. Now you can see I've mocked it up now, so I'm pretty sure I've done all the routing I need to do on this now. And now I'm just gonna drill in from the ends and I'm gonna put some little number six by inch and a quarter screws in, two in each corner, just so I can glue and screw this together a little bit, just to hold it in place. Now. I'm going to put the screws in from the ends of the sides because it's only this one corner where you'll be able to see those screw holes once it's in position. I'm going to countersink them in a little bit as well and I'll probably fill over the screws too so you won't actually see the screw heads once this job is finished. Well, I've got me shelf all glued up and uh, screwed together, so this bit's not coming apart anymore. It still needs quite a bit of finishing, of course, but uh, I think now, before I go any further, I'm just going to mock it up in the van so I can double check that I haven't got anything wrong and so you can see or at least start to get an idea of what it'll look like. I think I'll take these hanging bags down first because they'll just get in the way of me offering it up there. Well I tell you where it's tight enough that it will hold with just friction. Well not obviously not going to put anything on it. I might take a little bit off at one end just so it's not quite so tight because uh, it probably is a little over tight. I'll take it off this end because I've not got any radiuses to worry about and uh, I'm thinking actually I may not put a leg there I think that's that's just a little too much in the way really I think often we hang things over there um, when you're washing up drying up and things I might just support it with one stay coming down from the uh, top here. Anyway, I'm going to take it back out into the garage, plane off a little bit of this end and then we'll measure up, fix this in position, make a part to go there and then we can take it all down, sand it and uh, decorate it for a, for a nice finish. Now obviously I don't want to plane along here and hit the heads of these screws with my planer. Now fortunately, I think because uh, I've been faffing around in the house and stuff, stuff you haven't seen on film, renewing my uh, motorbike insurance actually, this glue has probably had enough time to dry that I can get away with removing these screws and just running the planer along the back here without the screws in. So let's give that a bit of a go.
Now I'm going to make sure I do this from the front because I'm bound to get a little bit of breakout on the back, especially on the back end of that mitre, but that won't be seen, so I'm not too worried about that. If I was really worried about that, I could always put another bit of timber there. I take off relatively little, about half a mil at a time. Right, I'll now take this out and I'll just offer it up into the van to see if it fits better. Right, there we go, I'm happy with that. Now, to level it up, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure with a tape measure. I'm not going to use a spirit level because uh, who knows, the van might not be level. Now this is more or less the position that the shelf will be in. I'm going to fix it, I think, with some screws and cups. Probably some nice number eight screws with some nickel plated cups. I think I've got some in the garage. So I'll go and see what I can find and I shall be back in a minute. Right, well I haven't got any number eight screws that are the right length. There really needs to be something like an inch and a quarter. I've got number six inch and a quarters, which should be fine, I think. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark out the hole. I put a single hole here where that small bulkhead next to the sink comes down. And I'll put two locating ones in there, which can just go through the thin ply of the inner lining and then I'll put a couple in here which will uh, go into that big thick bolt header. It'll be these end ones that take the weight. These ones will just be sort of locating positions really. Right, let's do that then. Right, well, a slight change of plan. What I'm going to do is I am going to have a leg coming up from underneath and it's going to be in this lightweight aluminium because I think this is already a little bit heavier than I planned. And it's just going to sit there like that. It's going to cover that corner and it's going to be mounted on there. I'll probably have to round off that bottom corner as well because that's going to look a bit weird, but... Uh, I think that's probably the best solution. It does definitely need something there to stop it moving around. And I think that's not going to look too out of keeping when I finished what I'm going to do along the top here. Well, I found in my stores some nice little uh, M5 bolts and uh, I've got some nylock nuts that I can put on there and some washers so we can use that to fix our angle onto that 90 degree bracket 
that we put next to the sink. So I'm going to go ahead and drill those M5 holes down there and then we can bolt that on. And I'm just going to drill a couple of screw holes for number six screws in the top there. And that should see us right with that leg just to stiffen everything up a bit. And there we go, there's that little support screwed into position. Now you may be thinking that looks a little incongruous, but I think it'll look all right when I've done what I'm going to do next. So uh, stay tuned for that. Yeah, so uh, that's how it's going to be. But what I really wanted, of course, was an elbow rather than a T. But I haven't got one, so uh, might have to wait until I've got one to finish it off completely. But now I'm going to dismantle it all and sand down and varnish that shelf. It's a couple of days later now. I've been to work yesterday and the day before that we spent much of the day making up some little crates for Nikki's shop and uh, she's got a video of that on her YouTube channel. Yes, Nikki's got a YouTube channel as well. I'll see if I can put a link for it up there or maybe there. I don't know, somewhere-ish up there. And hasn't the weather changed? It's uh, really wet and uh, damp and a little bit colder out there today. Anyway, back onto this. The first thing I'm going to do is I've got a couple of little open spots on some of the mitres. So I'm going to mix up some PVA glue with some of this uh, sawdust which I've saved just from general working and make a little paste to fill just the slight open mitre bits and pieces. Now while that dries, I'm just going to hit the pencil marks that I've made on this when I was setting it out with a normal pencil rubber, get rid of those, and then start sanding it lightly, ready for the varnish. I'll have to wait a bit before I sand those bits that I've just filled with the PVA and the sawdust mixture though. Now, of course, we're not supposed to be making any unnecessary journeys, so uh, I can't really pop out and get some nice varnish and a new brush because uh, what I'm doing isn't really vital, is it? But uh, we found some interior varnish. This is satin medium oak, and I think that might sort of be a not too bad match with what's in the van. I managed to find a reasonably nice condition brush in my drawer of manky brushes. So let's go ahead and give it a bit of a varnish. Dripping you can hear is the dripping from the gutter onto the garage door. Gonna have to fix that soon too. I reckon that colour will be all right but it's uh, coming up to one o'clock now so I think it's about time I've got myself some lunch while that dries and then I'll come out and give it a second coat. Oh, that was a very good lunch. Right now I'm going to go over it with the finest sandpaper I've got which is, is only 240 grit it's not that fine but uh, it'll still take some of the roughness out and then give it a second coat of the varnish and hopefully we'll get a nice smooth finish. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I have managed as well to pick up a couple of 15 mil end feed elbows so we don't have to dig around for anything else. Now where I had that Yorkshire tea just to hold the bar together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch them over with some 800 grit wet and dry and then spray them up with some primer and some silver paint so we haven't got that copper colour there. This varnish is dry enough now that I can put those brass clips back on. I wonder if the paint is dry on this? bit longer I think. Maybe I'll have a cup of tea while I wait for that. Righto, let's get this fixed up shall we? Well this little end feed elbow that I sprayed up has dried nicely now so I think I'm going to fit that with just some ordinary all-purpose glue. I've got some chemical metal I could use but it's not going to need to take any strain so I think this all-purpose glue will do the trick. Right let's uh, check it all out and get it assembled right before we glue it. hold most stuff in as we drive along I think. Well now I'm just gonna have a bit of a clear up of all the bits and pieces and get rid of some of this uh, sawdust and stuff that's built up and then uh, we'll get Nikki out and show her shall we? What do you think? It's cool. Well done. A little bit plumbing industrial. Plumbing industrial? Oh, I can't think of anything else to call it. Well, it's all done with stuff that was just in the garage. It's good. Well, the only thing I did have to get was one end feed copper elbow for it. But... You've done good. Excellent. Bit of extra storage, isn't it? If you enjoyed it press like subscribe if you want to see some more and ring the bell to be notified when we upload something new